China built a mega project in the mountains. American experts still can't believe its existence. The last of China's most significant hydroelectric projects, which is supposed to have a total installed capacity of 3 million kilowatts, was turned in on Friday, which marked the end of the project's work. The Yalong River Hydropower Development Co. Ltd. says that when the Liangqiu hydropower station is finished in 2023, it will produce more than 11 billion kilowatt per hour of electricity each year. The station is located at an average elevation of 3,000 meters in southwestern China. This video will talk about the new hydropower plant in China, the Liangqiu Hydropower Plant. Let's start! It was announced in October 2014 that the project would begin construction in October 2014 with an approved investment of 66.5 billion yen, that's 10.5 billion dollars. The first unit of the 295-meter Liangqiu hydropower plant, one of the 22-level power stations on the Yalong River approved by China's National Development and Reform Commission in September 2014. It was put into service Yaisheng County, Sichuan Province, in late September 2021. People in China's National Development and Reform Commission gave it the go-ahead for a 22-level power station on the Yalong River in September 2014. Ideally, the following five units will be fully operational by 2023. The Liangqiu Hydroelectric Project developed by the state-owned Chengdu Engineering Corporation is the second highest hydroelectric facility globally and the highest in China. It has the world's most bottomless reservoir, a 285 meter below sea level. A 115 meter tall intake tower serves as a cooling system for the power plant. A total of 11 billion kilowatt hours of electricity is planned to be generated annually by the hydroelectric project. Once built, the dam is expected to reduce raw coal use by 13.3 million tons per year and carbon dioxide emissions by 21.3 million tons per year, according to preliminary estimates. There is an influence on Tibetans who live upstream of the Yalong River which originates on the tibet Kingai Plateau and flows into the Yellow Sea, up to 100 kilometers away from the Liangqiu Dam. Tibetan human rights activists believe that when the Liangqiu project is completed in 2023, it will flood ancestral homes, sacred Buddhist temples, abundant farmland, and sacred mountains, such as Palshap Drakar, located in Tibet. According to reports, over 6,000 individuals were displaced due to the project, which took place across four countries. Compensation for the people who were moved was about 300,000 yen about 44,000 US dollars. Furthermore, the province of Sichuan, where the dam is located, is a seismically active area. China's 2008 earthquake, which claimed the lives of 87,000 people and injured 370,000 others while displacing 5 million people, had its epicenter in Wenchuan County, just a few hundred kilometers from Liangqiu. Some people think that the earthquake was caused by water pressure in the dam reservoir. According to Tibetan rights activists, a network of dams on rivers that originate in the Tibet Autonomous Region modifies water flow, creates new lakes, affects local ecosystems, and prevents the passage of silt, which is necessary for agricultural land to be productive. According to official estimates, between 1990 and 2015, at least a million people were forced to flee Tibet to make way for mining and hydroelectric projects. In the past, local authorities dealt with Tibetan protesters who opposed hydropower projects ruthlessly. Several women were alleged to have been shot by Chinese security officers throughout 2009. They were demonstrating in Yaizhang against the opposition of forcible relocation. According to reports from 2010, Chinese authorities tried to stop protests against dams and mining in Nagla Dzamba Mountain in the Tibetan Autonomous Region. Many people in the TAR love this mountain. In the same year, Karma Samdrup, the Three Rivers Environmental Protection Group founder, was sentenced to 15 years in Tibet for his crimes against the environment and humanity. According to reliable sources, he was detained in 2009 while attempting to secure the release of his two brothers, Chaim Namgyal and Rinshen Samdrup, 
who had been imprisoned for their efforts to rescue wildlife in Chamdo. Twenty Tibetans were detained in Deshen County, which is in the southeast part of the Tibetan Autonomous Region, in 2016 for opposing the building of a dam on the Langkang River. It is also believed to be the case that the vast majority of the hydroelectricity generated by Tibet's hydropower plants is exported to China's industrial towns and cities. There aren't many jobs for many Tibetans in the region, even though many dams are being built. The power companies hire Tibetans to work for them outside the Tibetan Autonomous Region, not inside the TAR. There have been concerns from Tibetan human rights advocates, representatives of the Tibetan government in exile, and several international experts about the TAR's promotion as a model of economic and environmental progress, even though they have concerns. Tibet's GDP has increased from 130 million yen in 1951 to 190 billion yen in 2020. That equals going from $20,650,000 to $29.3 billion US dollars. That's a tenfold increase. It was 14598 approximately 2271 US dollars per person in Tibet's rural areas in 2020, but it was 41156 or 6361 US dollars per person in the cities. The number of subsidies for forest protection and border surveillance that certain Tibetans are expected to get is roughly 10,000 or 1,551 US dollars per year. It's also said that 700,000 jobs have been created in the area since 2016 because of greenfield development. A total of more than 60 environmental laws govern environmental protection in the DAR, with ecological red lines protecting roughly 45% of the country's land. A total of 47 natural reserves have been established in the DAR, covering more than 34% of the region's total land area. China's President Xi Jinping visited the Nian River Bridge in July 2021, marking the environmental preservation efforts in the Brahmaputra and its tributary the Nyang River Basin. He also stressed the importance of quality development in Tibet, which he believes will occur under the CPC administration. According to the International Water Resources Association, water resources in Tibet are estimated to be 200 million kilowatt hours or 30% of China's total. Although Tibet has a total installed hydropower capacity of 1.77 million kilowatts, it is significantly less than China's total installed hydropower capacity of almost 341 million kilowatts as of 2017. This represents less than 1% of the theoretically exploitable quantity of available resources. In recent years, the Tibetan government has signed several agreements with sizable state-owned power companies. Still, hydropower isn't the only project on which they concentrate their efforts. Chinese companies such as Power China and China Three Gorges Corporation are just a few of the names on the list. According to the official sources, more water is being drawn from Tibet's rivers to generate hydroelectricity and meet water-related demands. China struggles to balance energy demand and supply. Many parts of the country's northern provinces are also experiencing water shortages. In other words, more hydro infrastructure will be built in the TAR and the impact on the local population will be researched. In September 2016, the Yalong River Basin Hydropower Development Company awarded a contract to Harbin Electric Group to supply six Francis turbines and related equipment for the project which is now under construction. Second company, China Gajuba Group Second Company was chosen in July 2015 for this project. They will design and build a system for the discharge buildings. The contract to build a dam for this project was given to a group of people from the 12th and 5th Hydropower Bureaus in April 2015. It took a group of engineers from the China Power Engineering Institute to design and build the Liangqiu Hydroelectric Station. The Chengdu Survey and Design Institute also worked on a feasibility study and a general layout for the hydroelectric project done by the Chinese government. 
The construction of the water intake tower for the hydropower plant has been contracted to a consortium of the 14th and 16th hydropower bureaus. In contrast, the rolling operation of the dam core wall has been hired to a consortium of the 1, 2, and 5 hydropower bureaus. The dam's core wall will be unmanned and operated by a consortium of the 1, 2, and 5 hydropower bureaus. And in connection to the dam building, SANY Heavy Industry was contracted to deliver seven rollers for use in the rolling activity of the project. What do you think about this video? Let us know in the comments area below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell before leaving. And thanks for watching.